Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-15E Strike Eagle and we're looking at deploying the AIM-120 AMRAAM. For this video, I'm going to assume that you've already watched my video on the beyond visual range functions of the air-to-air -air radar and the within visual range functions of the radar. Today is just weapon deployment. First, controls we'll be needing today are weapon release button to fire the missile, castle switch left to assign soy, all five TDC controls, auto acquisition aft to enter twiz, as well as coolie up short for quick step. We can carry eight AIM-120s on the stations shown. The variants we can have are AIM-120B and AIM-120C5, so we'll go for all eight. Let's set the jet up for combat. First, make sure the radar is on, and it is. Make sure our master mode is air to air, and it is. Make sure our master arm is to arm. Screens on the MPDs, air to air radar left, we need our PAX air-to-air -air combat, so armament, air-to-air. -air. We can see our eight AIM-120 stations, they're known as Vs. The C5 was known as the V for some reason, I have no idea why. The one we currently have selected is this one here, and it's ready to fire. The others will be ready when they're selected. To select the AMRAM, and I forgot to show this earlier, we can select our weapons with weapons mode switch aft for gun, center for sidewinder, and forward for medium range AMRAM. And when the weapon is selected, it will show here. Currently A for AMRAM, eight for eight of them, and B for the C5. And that's it. We're gonna first lock a single target with a single target track and look at the symbology. Well, there's a bunch of targets in front of us. We need to make our radar soy, so castle left long. We're gonna unpause because we're currently paused. We're going to TDC our way down to the target. We're going to command a mini raster again. I assume you will know how to use the radar. And we have an STT. Symbology specific to the AMRAM is an ASE circle here, allowable steering error. The steering cue here. The rule is before we fire the missile, we must get the steering cue here inside the ASE circle. To show that we have that and we're within range to fire, we have our star down here. The other symbology is non-AMRAM specific to the HUD. So the target is here. Around the target is the target designator box. Our shoot cue, our star here, tells us that we have satisfied five parameters. That we've got the AIM-120 selected and it's the priority and ready to fire. That our master arm is on. That we have a lock, either an STT, a DTT or a D-TWIZ. In this case, an STT that our steering dot is inside the ASE circle, so that's the ASE circle, that's the steering dot, and that the target range is within our aero and our min. We'll go over that in a minute. Around the ASE circle is the target's vector. It's this tail here. He's showing that it's coming directly towards us. If it was up here, he'd be going away, right and left. Here we have the target's altitude, 6,500 feet, and his relative aspect, 170 degrees bias right. His range, 18.6 nautical miles. Also, because our master arm is on, we now have a gun cross on our bore sight here. And the all-important range scale, otherwise known as dynamic launch zone, it's this guy here. 0, 20 miles, 40 miles. Our current range here, about 18 miles, with a closing velocity of 762 knots. On the right-hand side of the range scale, we have six ranging cues. That's quite complex. We have triangle, circle, dash, field triangle, that guy there, and that guy there. We have our aero, our opt, our pi, our maneuver, our TR, and our min. Let's break those down. Our aero, maximum aerodynamic range, is the absolute maximum missile launch range. It assumes the target is not maneuvering and does not accelerate. It is calculated using optimal own ship steering, meaning the steering dot is centered on the ASE. Our opt, maximum range probability of intercept with optimum steering is a special case of R pi q calculated assuming the steering dot is centered in the ASE circle, optimal steering. 
assumes no maneuvers from the target but in all other aspects is the same as RPI Q described below. RPI, maximum range probability of intercept with current steering, is a maximum launch range with current steering that assures a high likelihood of success. It also assumes no maneuvers from the target, i.e. that it maintains a current velocity with no acceleration. With the steering dot centered in the ASC, RPI is the same as ROPT. R maneuver Q, maximum launch range against a maneuvering target represents maximum range against a target executing at launch a constant speed level 4G turn towards the tail at missile launch. RTR, range turn and run, indicates a maximum launch range against a target that is executing an evasive turn and run maneuver at launch. And finally, RMIN indicates the minimum launch range that assures any likelihood of success. So what that tells you is, to decide when to fire your missile means you need to know about the target. Is it a fighter? Is it going to manoeuvre? Is it manoeuvring now? How hard is it manoeuvring? And so on. And using the appropriate range cue. Also, how well have I centred my steering dot in the ASE circle? So with that done, we can fire the missile. We are within our parameters. We're going to press and hold pickle. Our weapons uh, release. Off it goes. Note, we get a new factor down here. This is a little bit work in progress, but it still shows what we need to show. First, it will show the amount of seconds before the AMRAM turns its own radar on, at which point it will show a new figure, which is the range or time until impact. I'm going to speed up because it's quite a long shot. 20 seconds, 10 seconds. Radar has now gone active. It's now 15 seconds predicted. This is all estimated times. TTI, time to impact. And we got him. It worked perfectly that time because he wasn't manoeuvring. So the predictor was perfectly accurate. And that is Amram fired in a normal mode in STT. Now let's fire eight Amrams in Twiz. So we have eight targets in front. Slowed in. Okay, master arm on. Send soy to the left screen and let's TDC down. Split yourself in twiz again. I assume you know how to use the radar. I'm going to mini raster and I'm going to auto acquisition aft. We're now in twiz. Let everything populate. Right, I'm going to auto lock. Eight selected and that's me good. So I'm going to fire. Call you up short for the quick step. Fire. Call you up short. Fire. Pretty up short, fire. 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 Fire, I've lost count now. Fire. That's me, Winchester, I believe. All right, can't be bothered to put autopilot on, so let's just have this missile's track. Uh, where's the thing, there it is. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, baby. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Splash eight value viewers. That is the power of the Strike Eagle with A120C on a Twiz. That shows how to use the AMRAM in STT and Twiz. DTT is essentially the same as Twiz but just with two targets. There is an upcoming mode called Visual Mode but it's not yet available. I hope that was useful and see you later.